We're at a fun and spooky new exhibit here at the Florida Museum of Natural History. It's wicked plants, and Darcy, you're going to tell us all about the wicked plants. There's a reason why plants are wicked, isn't there? Years and years, millions of years of evolution taught plants how to defend themselves against predators. So mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. want you and me and other mammals coming along, munching on them and destroying them. They've developed chemical and physical defenses to ward you off. Wow. I've been talking to a lot of people in the horticultural industry or botanists who seem to have this real interest in kind of the dark side of the plant world. Plants that are deadly, dangerous, illegal, immoral, offensive, horrifying in some way. But there are some really interesting stories behind these plants. You know, there's a plant that killed Socrates. There's a plant that killed Abraham Lincoln's mother. And I thought it would be fun to tell those stories. It's set up kind of like a haunted old Victorian yeah, it's mansion. Fun. It's neat. So you come in and you're a little disoriented mm -hmm. and you have to look around and search for clues about what's going on. For right. example, a murder mystery. Some wicked plants could kill you because they're toxic, right? Right. In fact, we have a few here in our area that surprised me. I didn't realize how many toxic plants we have in our very own garden. And that's actually a good takeaway from the exhibit is you learn which plants you should just stay away from. Some like azaleas that are quite toxic. Of course, we don't Ooh. normally chew on azaleas. No, no. There's a very, very deadly plant in our area called water hemlock that mm -hmm. looks a lot like Queen Anne's lace or mm -hmm. carrots, mm -hmm. but it's one of the most deadly plants in the United States. Some of the wicked plants, they're wicked because they smell bad. Right, the <laughs> stinky plants the are stinky in plant. the bathroom. Room. They're stinky because they want to lure flies to pollinate them. Flies like stinky things. So yeah. again, over millions of years of evolution, they've developed these odors that attract flies and then they're guaranteed to be pollinated. And there's some awesome wicked plant souvenirs in the gift shop. And if you really want to get wicked, there's the scavenger hunt with wicked plants inside and outside of the museum. You'll have a great time finding them all. The thing I love the best is the dining room table, which is set up for a banquet. It's cool. It's a lot of interesting puzzles about about plants mm -hmm. and it allows for social learning. The more people, the better, because some of these mysteries are a little hard to solve. You really have to look through it and figure it out yourself. You can open drawers, you can touch stuff, pick it up and make your own decisions. It's very interactive. There are stuff that, that the adults are gonna get and there's stuff that teenagers are gonna get and that the kids are gonna get, so it kind of works it for all ages. While you're at the Florida Museum of Natural History, there's all the other great exhibits. The cave. I love the cave. The butterfly rainforest is the best. The underwater scene. With wicked plants now at the Florida Museum of Natural History through the summer. It's scary, it's fun, it's educational, and of course all the other great exhibits at the Florida Museum of Natural History. In fact, Darcy, I'm going to go on that scavenger hunt right now. Just don't eat anything. I won't, Darcy, I won't. <laughs>